Before we start modeling, we'll create a more efficient workspace. Select this corner and drag it to the side to split into two windows. Press N to hide the property shelf and T to unhide the tool shelf. In this window, press numpad 3 for side view. Now we're able to work more efficiently using both views at the same time. Left mouse button to place the cursor at the center of the eye in both views. Shift spacebar to isolate and maximize front view. We'll start blocking the eye socket with a circle. Shift A to add a circle. Give the circle 12 vertices and align to view. Shift spacebar to toggle out of maximized viewport. In edit mode, scale to meet outer corners of the eyes and scale in Z. Adjust the shape, tracing an outline over the eye contour of our reference image. Distribute the vertices so top and bottom have equal amounts. Press numpad 7 for top view and adjust the shape to smooth out the curve. And tab into object mode. Under Modifiers, we'll add a mirror modifier. Right now it's mirroring an X from its center. To mirror properly, we'll adjust the object's center so it's at the origin. Press Ctrl A and apply the location and rotation. Now that our object is mirroring correctly, we're ready to work on the right side while the left side automatically updates. Press E to extrude and scale outward. We're going to line up this edge loop to follow the eyelid crease. Adjust in side view. Middle mouse button to switch to user ortho and continue to adjust the shape. Extrude the outer edge loop and place it to encircle just below the eyebrow and base of the eye. Adjust in side view.
Right now, we're just blocking out the basic topology and general form of the eye socket area. Once these larger shapes work, it will be easier to later add more detail to them, forming more accurate results. Select and extrude these two edges, and translate an X to the center. Right now, the vertices are crossing through the mirror. To prevent this, under Mirror Modifier, enable Clipping Plane. Using side view, line these up to the bridge of the nose. Selecting the outer edge loop, extrude and scale outward to encircle above the eyebrow and cheek. Adjust the shape. It's okay if the front and side don't match up perfectly. For now we'll be using the front view as our main guide, and the side view will be our secondary guide. Control R to add an edge loop at the bridge of the nose. Smooth out the shape. This vertical edge defines the center crossing through the eye pupil. It also separates the inner and outer eyebrow. These horizontal edges separate between the upper and lower eyelid area. Vertical edges for top and bottom lineup. This defines the eyebrow area. They are connected together at the center to work as one unit. This mask-like construction and circular edge flow will even allow for some flexibility for more cartoon-styled characters. <laughs> 